Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Leading Change. I've got Lisa with me, and we're actually going to pick up a little bit of the conversation that we had during the InsureTech Connect Live that we did and talk more about the idea of pointillism. But before I get to all the questions that I've got for you, Lisa, can you give everybody an introduction? Sure. Hey, Lisa Wardlaw, coming to you now live from Atlanta, Georgia. I've spent about 27 years in insurance in and around consulting. I worked at Munich Re, and I also worked at Farmers Insurance, to name a few. Great. Thank you so much for joining me. I wish that we could be in the room together again, but we'll wait until the next event for that. So I mentioned in that introduction and kind of teased this idea of pointillism, but I want us to get started with talking a little bit about what that idea is first and foremost, and why you feel like it's causing some heartburn in the space of insure tech and insurance solutions. Yeah, I guess I'll have to start by saying a little bit, Emily, there's always these references, which is one thing I just love so much about your show, which is like how to simplify these concepts and observations that we have that are causing heartburn. And so breaking this down into something that reflects art is being, and the, I guess the core thing that I keep thinking about is we are over indexed on point solutions. And that's actually what then drew me to the pointillism analogy that you and I started talking about. So ener energetically at ITC, which if we think about it, pointillism as a movement connects many dots to form art. And my favorite one, of course, is George's Surratt. And it's the, the image by the beach. So even if nobody knows anything about pointillism, we don't, we're not doing an art history class here. But the point is that everything comes together. And when it comes together, it actually makes this beautiful depiction of a scene, of an image, and something that we then can not only draw beauty and inspiration from, but that forms a complete picture in our mind. And so the thing that I think is causing heartburn in particular in the insurance industry right now is that we have a lot of point solutions. And what we could talk about is like, who's driving that? And then whose responsibility is that? But right now we have an over-indexing of point solutions that is not being formed into a coherent visual. So what's really missing is the art or the artist forming the visual from the dots or the point solutions. And I'll pause there. You set me up perfect for continuing this analogy a little bit more with that idea of, okay, so we've got these point solutions all over the place. So from your viewpoint, who should be the one with the vision of the full painting in mind? Should that be the insurer that's p pulling in all of these point solutions? Or should the insured tech community and the people that have these solutions be focusing on building partnerships to help paint that picture for the insurers? We can definitely start with, I think it's a complex question and I don't think that there's a one size fits all answer, fortunately. I think that who it is not, I think whose responsibility is not, is probably not the solution integrator and not the consulting firms per se. And I say that because usually a solution integrator is probably trying to integrate a specific architecture or a specific solution. And again, they're, they're probably like, their job is to connect point A to point B, not to form the art. So I would say that the vision and who is the artist really comes back to a little bit of supply and demand achieving the, you know, uptake that we're looking for. So let's start with, I think, in the beginning, in this digital movement that we're all in the midst of, we probably would have placed the onus of the artistry on the insurance company. And there's so many wonderful insurance companies that are doing amazing things with their integrated business teams, their integrated stakeholders, et cetera. But what I see as lacking is who's actually drawing the art and being the artist. And then let's connect it back to a little bit of a theme, right? Pointillism wasn't always known. It wasn't always a discovered form. And so somebody had to create the art form itself and they had to then figure out how do I take all these little dots and then form art from that? As Meaning they didn't just say, there's all these dots. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to form some art, which is a little bit of what I think the industry is 
rejecting right now. We're taking little dots and we're saying, oh, I need to form something. So what am I going to form? And so we're having this fragmented version of solutions or innovation scenarios. On the flip side, I think that insurtechs were predominantly not only rewarded, but conditioned, I guess I would say, to stay in your lane, be focused, be narrow, and create basically the outcome as a point solution. Then we've migrated into this, okay, maybe that's not enough because maybe people don't know how to form pointillism as an art or what they're forming isn't going to actually solve the problem. So they're being swept up in this movement that's not yet reached pointillism. So now I'm seeing some people beyond, we started with marketplaces, which is like, how can we have all the points? I'll call that like in the artist painting kit. (laughs) Then we move to an ecosystem, which might be like paint by number if we're following the theme here on artistry. But ultimately, Emma, what it comes back to is you cannot escape the fact that you need the artist. You need the artist to understand what scene am I painting? What visual and output am I creating to solve a net new industry problem or perhaps make something better? I'm a big, in the book of zero to one, I'm a big zero to one person, less one to N. I think one to N needs to exist, but I think we need to solve for zero to one, which is why I believe somebody has to be the designer and the artist and they have to own that. I think it can come from the outside in. It's a little bit harder. I, but you could put the entire art together and then sell it as art, as a new movement. But I think it could also come from the inside out. And so if we think back to some just kind of basics of marketing and kind of success, if we think of crossing the chasm, right? We need those, instead of tech evangelists and visionaries, we need the pointillism artists. So we need to discover those artists and similar to the pointillism movement, there's not just one artist that can create pointillism, right? There were multiple artists that started to do this. And so I think we need to identify those creators and really understand how we can be part of their toolkit and then help them paint the actual outcome of the landscape that they're trying to achieve. You touched on so many ideas that we've actually been going back and forth in comments and posts and stuff about since ITC. LinkedIn's going to deactivate us, right? <laughs> they might. They need more engagement, Emma, so maybe <laughs> you should be careful about that. There's a couple of things that I want to touch on. One is that idea of that it doesn't always have to land on the shoulders of the insurance company, or even if we take a step outside of, because this is not a challenge that's unique just to the insurance industry. From my past experience, I've seen that this idea of point solutions and this like transformation at a point in time, at a point in the process is so common across the board because we're trying to solve these like very specific problems and then taking a step back and wondering why all of a sudden our whole organization hasn't changed. So I think that is not unique to insurance, but specifically in the insure tech world and at ITC, one of the things that I heard a lot of conversation about and saw a lot of movement towards is that mindset of almost the vendors or the solution providers in the space recognizing this need for partnership and this need for collaboration to drive our whole industry to the next level. And you mentioned an idea of the marketplace and maybe moving beyond that idea. What comes beyond it? You mentioned the idea of an ecosystem, but what does that look like in your mind? First of all, I love the fact that we can get out of these overused terms of marketplaces and ecosystems, right? Because I think what happens is the first thing is we all went to a follow the journey. I was actually having this conversation this morning with a great colleague and the journey was, it was hard to scout and understand all these things. So we created these generically marketplaces where we could see multiple solutions together. And again, that's not creating pointillism, right? It's just, here's a lot of dots. (laughs) doesn't create the art itself. And so then we moved to, beyond the marketplace, which I would call an ecosystem. And the observation that I have right now is there's still a lot of redundancy because of the point solution focus. There's a lot of redundancy in what people are doing, meaning I had to take my solution all the way to from A to Z. And maybe like 
A to M is overlap with your solution. So are we friends? Are we allies? Are we competitors? And then of course, when you start talking to founders or CEOs or chief revenue officers, and I've done this by the way, so I've been trying to put some of this together and I'll get to the point of what I'm starting to call it. I'm going to start to call it like an exchange because I think exchange has a lot more connotation and meeting than ecosystem or marketplace. So I'm going to call this now like a digital exchange where we all break down our pieces and parts. So I think creating art, you have a certain vision in mind of what you're trying to create. So somebody has to have that vision and they have to understand how to affect the marketplace, whether it's the insure tech coalition or whether or not it's the insurance companies or even insurance companies can form coalitions to create these industry-wide world-changing zero to one concepts. But what you have to do is break down the pieces and parts. And I call it composition and decomposition. And in order to do that, you have to check your ego at the door and really get into like Tesla does a great job of this. What's your secret sauce? And so I think insure techs then have to get into a, my secret sauce is, for example, a Tesla battery or this color in the paint kit. And the rest of this is common. And in some of the worlds I work in, that could be like open source or commonly readily available. And so then we can form a new outcome, which says, if I give you money and I'm not trying to mark it up for your secret sauce, but I'm putting and stringing your secret sauce together to form the pointillism art that will make everyone have uptick in revenue, uptick in scale, and we can actually penetrate the market. I see that as a recurring theme across embedded insurance, embedded health, micro insurance. I see it in geospatial wellness. I see it from my background in life. So I think that this is not something that's unique to any one specific problem that we're trying to solve, which is why I think it needs to be a movement. So again, I guess to summarize, I would go beyond a marketplace because that's just really an offering of what's out there, who happens to participate in that. I would go beyond an ecosystem and I would really start to say, like, how do we create digital solution exchanges where we're willing to enter into this kind of break down, compose and decompose our parts still all get valued for the parts that we contribute to this unique IP and unique solution, and then create something that on its own doesn't exist. I think that's what the market, the insurance carriers and the customers will ultimately start demanding of us to do. I think that idea of the exchange and taking a look at some of the components that you mentioned, like this idea of open architecture and really enabling that kind of collaboration across the board is another big trend that I'm seeing just the technology industry pushing really significantly right now. So we, another conversation for another day, but when you start to look at things like the movement towards web three and the metaverse and all of these conversations that are focused around open source architecture and really creating this like way for people to build things that we've never seen before, it all comes back to this idea of like partnership and collaboration and how do we enable that through technology. So maybe that's another conversation for us to have a different day. Yeah, I you have my mind going because he just to get to wet wet the appetite for people that are listening and still are with us at this point in the conversation. I think that what people think of as is that separate and distinct. And I think that it's the canvas by which we will ultimately paint on and the instruments. So pointillism, of course, there's a different instrument than a brush, right? And so as you think of open source and open architecture, you and I haven't even touched on, there's so many open concepts with machine learning and how do we actually learn from data and we don't have to co-locate the data. And I'm not going to get into a techie discussion right now, to your point, that'd be for a later day and time. But the point is in forming something that extends beyond a point solution in this exchange, we have to bring multiple things together strategically to make it all work and function an amazing piece of art that one day we'll sit back and hopefully and <laughs> admire in the Louvre, right? And, or I'll go to Paris with you, Emma. Anyway, maybe we can hang one of our insurance solutions up there and see what we get in terms of that would be a fun, that would be a fun live from. Maybe Anthony will cover that one for us. Um, <laughs> But I think what we're really missing is we think of things as like insure tech A plus B plus C 
plus whatever legacy plus my own data. What we don't think of is I've got all the colors in the world, all the pigment. How do I pull all that together? So back, we, we always had a saying when I was running innovation for a very large insurance company, we generically all have access to the same paint kits. All of us do, right? There's not anybody listening to here that wouldn't functionally and predominantly have access to the same paint. What we do with it as artists and how we create the pointillism movement is what defines and separates us. That's how we get from zero to one. So it's always been, and I'll land on this, but it's always been the cognitive dexterity, not the tools. The tools enable it. Again, they're the paint in our paint kit. But it's the cognitive dexterity of how we think to apply that in ways that have never been applied before and that are not incongruent with what the paint was intended to do to begin with, right? <laughs> I think we could keep going for a really long time, Lisa, but I am going to stop and say thank you so much for joining me and continuing the first five-minute conversation that we had because clearly that wasn't enough. If you are watching and you're not already, make sure you make your way over to Lisa's LinkedIn and follow her there and or join in on any of our back and forth that we have. As we mentioned, we might get banned from LinkedIn at some point for being too good of friends. But thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Leading Change. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe and come back weekly for more expert interviews on digital transformation, change management, and emerging technologies.